Okay, so let's get started. This is Ask Finola How, and we are at episode eight, which is all about the customer journey. And the thing that I want to pose for you today is whose journey is it anyway, okay? So some of you will be familiar with the concept of customer journey and some of you won't, okay? And to simplify it, if we take a moment and think about the journey that every person, so if you think about your business and your business is here to serve, okay? And if your business is here to serve, then you are serving your customer with the answer to a problem. And so when each of us has a problem, we take the steps to um, we take the steps to solve our problem, okay? And what we want to do is to start to map the journey that a customer takes in solving their own problem. So what we've been doing over the last few weeks was getting to know our customers, understanding their pain points, knowing how to profile them. If we do this work really solidly and really well, well then we truly understand our customers, we know, like, and trust them. So we also have to trust our customers, remember. And if we understand the problem that they're trying to solve and the problem that we can help them with, then we must take a moment and take ourselves out of the loop and sit in a position of noticing to see how are they currently finding the answer to that problem. And it takes a great deal of stillness and understanding that this is a pause. This is a moment where you need to stop in your business and not sell a moment. Now it is a moment, right? And however long that moment takes to stop and observe and to notice their behavior. So when they have a problem, like they want to find, buy a new car, they feel very anxious and they want to solve their anxiety problem. They want to be more resilient. They want to succeed. They want to learn about marketing. They want to, whatever it is that is their challenge, sit and see, perhaps to see if you can't do it as an observer, to perhaps place yourself in the position of being that person trying to solve that problem. And what are the steps that you will go through to solve the problem, okay? So some of the obvious things, and I want you to steal this, right? Some of the obvious things are, well, I'll Google it, okay? So that's your first step on the journey. Or will I go into that store or a store that sells these things and I will go into a store that sells these things? How will I choose that store? When I go into that store, what department am I looking for to find the answer I need? What person do I need to speak to to find the answer I need? Which of my peers has already found the answer? And can I ask them, what do they recommend? And when they've recommended somebody or I found the shop that I'm going into, what do I do next? Can I take it for a test run? How do I know that this is the right choice for me? Is this the piece of bread I want with my dinner? So it's really stilling yourself and saying, what is the steps that my customer is going to go through to find the answer to their problem? Now, this seems very simple and it seems very obvious. And in fact, it is actually very obvious because it allows our customers to teach us. The challenge here is most companies don't do this. Most businesses don't do this. It seems a little bit indulgent in some ways, but it's actually the clue to your own sales process, to your own sales and marketing process, to that funnel that we will look at in our next session. To take this moment of seeing, how do they become aware of the answer? How do they discover the answer? How do they notice that this is the right answer for them? How do they test that this is possibly the right answer for them? How do they buy the right answer for them? And then afterwards, What's the experience like after they've purchased? Did it really solve the problem? How do they, what is that experience? Now, there are very simple steps that every person goes through when they're so, when very obvious repeating steps that most people go through to solve the answer to their problems. 
And in the marketing of it, we need to ask those questions, okay? So we are asking questions like, how do they become aware? How do they become interested in you as being the answer? Or how do they become interest? How did the customer become interested in this particular choice or narrow their choice down? What are the decisions that they made to narrow the choice? How did they consider that you might be the answer or this product might be the answer? And then how did they buy? We often forget this. What was the experience like in buying? This is part of the customer journey. What was the experience like in buying? Okay. What was the experience like after purchase? When I was trying to put that rug that I bought into the car, but it didn't fit into the bag when I left the retail outlet. What, how did, when there was a problem, what was that like? So if I bought a car, or if I did a course and never finished it, or if I bought a car and then it didn't work, or if I bought bread and it was stale, or if I, how did that company answer my queries? How did it feel? What did it feel like? Okay. So what I'm trying to share with you here, or what I am sharing with you here is taking a moment to notice through each of the stages that someone goes through to answer their problem, to find the answer to their problem. And then did they actually answer it at the end? How do you know? Where's the proof? Okay. Or do they have to start the search again? So if they come to us for the answer, we want to make sure that they don't have to find the answer somewhere else because they've already spent with us. We must make sure that we deliver on the promise that we make. So this is the idea of customer journey. Now, the trap always is that in our effort to walk in our customer's shoes, we jump in in our own. We jump in and say, but I want them to go here next. And this is where they should go next. No, no, no. They must buy this product and then they buy this one and this one. We must resist the temptation to put ourselves in our customer's shoes when we are in observer mode. So the first step to really understanding the power of customer journey is to move into observer mode to notice, to stop your own story getting in the way of theirs. That makes sense, okay? And, you know, ask me a question if you're stuck, okay? The next thing that I want you to have in mind, okay, is think about each stage of that process. What are the goals that they're trying to achieve? So we break it down a little bit more. So at the very start, they may be saying, I kind of want to just find three people because I want to compare them. They're not looking for the one answer at the start. They're looking for two or three possible answers that they can compare notes to because they'll feel better. So think about at every stage in this journey, from the idea of the answer to their problem right through to solving that problem, what is the goal at each point? Because it's not the goal at each point in the journey is not solve my problem, solve my problem, solve my problem. No, they break it down. I want to narrow down who it is. I want to see how much it costs. I want to know who else talks about this. Have I a point of reference here? Is there someone I trust also using this? These are all the decision points and these are all the goals at each point in that customer journey, okay? Another, another really good thing to do in each stages of this is to actually say, how do they feel at each point? Are they nervous at each point? Are they nervous and don't know what to look for? Are they confused? because the opportunity lies in how they feel. And if you can say, don't be nervous, this is the answer you need. This is the thing I want to share with you. This is how I will make you feel comfortable in finding your answer, okay? So attach emotion to every single stage and think about the emotion that you want them to feel. So for example, you will want them to feel happy and satisfied at the end of this process. You want to take them on an emotional journey with you, whether they're buying tech or buying um, a bunny, for, bunny rabbit for their child. They still, you still want them to see, feel positive and reassured at every single point, okay? And then lastly, look for the opportunity they're trying to show you. I see most opportunities, marketing opportunities in companies and the things that make a difference to how a company grows and how it succeeds 
in the time that they spend noticing the opportunity that their customer is trying to show them. We are too often focused on our own voice, and this is coming from somebody who's a believer in brand and making sure your voice is heard. But there's a time when you need to step out of the shoes and allow your customer's voice to be heard. And when we can integrate the journey of our customer and the voice of the customer with our own processes and our own journey, then we can truly succeed because we can hear them. And if we hear them, we can build products they want to solve the problems that they have. If we can hear them, we can see the points that are trigger points. And if we hear them, we can show them that we are right for them. And that's what I'd like to leave you with today on Ask Finola How, Episode 8, Customer Journey. Have a thought today and reflect on, take a moment and reflect on, can you map the journey your customer takes to find the answer to their problem? And if you can write the map, then you have the tools to insert yourself into their journey because you'll know when it counts you'll know when it matters. Have a wonderful day, everyone. I'm taking two weeks holidays, guys, so we won't have an Ask Finola How for the next two weeks because it's really important to take a break. But after that, I'll be back with the funnel. And that's where we match their journey with our process. I hope you'll join me then. Have a great day. Take care.